before we get started, I want to remind you to get your Bibles and uh, we're going to open up in prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you thanking you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the young people uh, and adults that are tuning in tonight. Lord, we ask that you give the teachers much wisdom. Uh, hide us behind the cross as we bring forth your word. Uh, we thank you for everything, for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We know some books, some books of the Bible. We know some books, some books of the Bible. We know some books, some books of the Bible. These are some books that we really know. Old Testament. Genesis. 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 Exodus. Exodus. Leviticus. 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 Numbers. Numbers. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Joshua. Joshua. Judges. Judges. Ruth. Ruth. First Samuel. First Samuel. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. First King. First King. Second King. Second King. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Ezra. Ezra. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Esther. Esther. Job. Job. Psalm. Psalm. Proverbs. Proverbs. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Sons of Solomon. Sons of Solomon. Isaiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Daniel, Daniel, Hosea, Hosea, Joel, Joel, Amos, Amos, Obadiah, Obadiah, Jonah, Jonah, Micah, Micah, Nahum, Nahum, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Haggai. Zachariah. Zachariah. Malachi. Malachi. Wait, wait. Praise the Lord, young people. My name is Sister Citra, and tonight I'll be bringing you the memory verse portion of our lesson. Tonight, the memory verse will be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Now, everyone, if you have your Bibles, please get that. And then turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. All right. And then I'm going to read that. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou cometh to me with a sword and with, spe and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. All right, amen, amen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to break the verse down. We're gonna, like we normally do, we're going to do it in the three, um, three pieces. Um, we're going to say it three times. Um, so say, just say it with me, all right? First Samuel chapter 17, verses 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou cometh to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. All right, amen, praise the Lord. We're gonna say it one more time. First Samuel chapter 45, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou cometh to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. All right, we're going to do this and we're going to read it one, we're going to say it one more time. And that is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistines, Thou cometh to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. Amen, amen, praise the Lord. Uh, young people, uh, we thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you so very much for tuning in every night to us uh, to hear God's word. And we ask that you prepare your hearts as Brother Colvin brings to you the message. Thank you. Lord AOBM family, saints, boys and girls, this is Brother Cobian coming to you with this Saturday's message. And it is on David's respect for King Saul this week. We are in the area now after David has slain Goliath and a lot of things are happening in the life of David right now because of God's power and how he has allowed God to use him in many situations here. So a lot's happening right now. We're going to learn a little bit about some of the things that are occurring after the slaying of Goliath that are changing David's life really, really quickly. But God is still great and God is still ever present and walking with David. Let's have a word of prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you giving you great thanks for this day. Thanks for this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for an opportunity to get in your word. And thank you, Lord, for giving me an opportunity to share it. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for just using me. And I ask that you hide me behind the cross. I don't want to be seen or heard, but that you get all the glory out of this lesson. We thank you for the we pray and give thanks. Amen. I want to start this lesson off by saying, as people, it's probably hard for us to have respect for someone who has tried to hurt us or a leader who has tried to harm us, but we should. It's hard to have respect for someone in a leadership role or somebody who you considered a friend that tried to hurt you, but we still should because that's what God would have us to do. Now, in the story of David right now, where we are, it's it it's kind of, you know, comes to a head in First Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 through 22. Those are a lot, a lot of the scriptures that we're using for this lesson. But the scriptures and the verses from chapter 17 all the way up to 24 tell a lot of the story of what's going on in um, David's life right now. Um, David fought Goliath and he won. And uh, King Saul wants David at the palace now. He's, he's got him up there all the time. And oh, David, um, stay here at the palace with us. That's what he wanted. And uh, Saul became, I mean, uh, David became good friends with Jonathan. Uh, they built a really, really good friendship. And, you know, David is just in the palace now. He's good friends with Saul's son, uh, Jonathan. And let's see how things start changing a bit here. So David is now a commander of the army troops. And because he's a commander of the army troops and he's uh, been successful, again, wonderful, good things happening in the life of David, um, he becomes a favorite of the people. And just about everything that he did, the people were happy, they loved it, and thought David was awesome. So they come to a day of celebration, a big party, so to speak, because they had defeated the Philistines. So the people start singing a song. And that song basically was saying that Saul has killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. That was the chant of the song. Saul has killed his thousands, but David his ten thousand. And Saul began to pay attention to what they were saying in this song and uh, suddenly what, what he realized what they were saying. And he started saying, you know what? They think David is greater than me. He's not the king. I'm the king. So now all of a sudden we have a little thing called jealousy that's coming into Saul. Oh, they're worshiping and praising the name of David. I'm the king. Why are they so excited about who he is? This should be about me. Saul is now angry with David. Jealousy starts that has, has set in, and he decides that he wants to kill David. He made up in his mind, I'm going to kill David. So David had to leave the palace because even a few times what happened, uh, David was, was playing the harp for Saul, which was supposed to soothe him. And he actually tried to kill him more than once while he was doing this. So David ended up having to leave and flee the palace. So a few times Saul goes out and he's looking for David and he's still trying to kill him. And Saul ends up uh, going to rest in a cave while he's out and he falls asleep. While he was asleep, David's men find him. David finds him. And when he could have killed him, when he could have harmed him, he did not. Could have killed Saul, could have harmed him. He finds him sleeping while he was looking for him. And David spared him. David spared him. What did we say earlier? What were we talking about? Remember that? And David chooses to spare the life of Saul when he had the opportunity to kill him. What David did instead was when Saul was asleep, he crept up on him real slow and quiet and he cut a piece of his robe off. And then when he had a chance to talk to Saul, he told him that, you know what, I could have killed you and I didn't. I didn't brought no harm to you. All I did was cut off a piece of your coat. So you have to believe that I don't want to harm you is what he said. Could have killed you if I wanted to, but I didn't. So Saul said back to him, he said, is that really you, David, when all this is happening? Um, then David got a little sad. He started crying and he said to David, you are a better man than I am, but you have repaid me good for evil. I'm reading this from the book now because this is the best way I can explain it to you, seeing how much love and respect David still had for somebody who tried to harm him. And this is nothing but the love of God. So just because, again, we should get back at somebody doesn't mean that we should. Because we can doesn't mean that we should because God is always going to fight our battles for us. Now, remember, David is already going to be king. 
Saul doesn't realize this yet, but David's already going to be king. God has already said so. So to what he's putting in place, it's going to happen. And it really doesn't matter, you know, for it, it's not important for David to go and seek any revenge against Saul because God's still going to take care of David. He's with him. He promised to be with him. So the message is today and what I want to bring to you is that we should be just like David. And when people do things to us and try to harm us, we do not need to seek revenge. And why do we need to not seek revenge? Because that's how, first of all, it's not how God wants us to be. And he is the one who will avenge us. We don't go after people and say, you know what, they did whatever to me and then get in a situation or a mindset where we feel like we have to go back and attack and be the ones to do something to them. We shouldn't even harbor hate in our hearts towards people who hurt us. And it's not an easy thing to accomplish. But when you think about it, we've all probably been on both sides. I've probably hurt people and, you know, and they may have wanted to do something to me. And I know people have hurt me and I've wanted to do something to them. But God whispers and says, you know what? Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. And I want you to have a forgiving because love conquers a multitude of sins and love can cover it. So being respectful to our leaders, being respectful to people who have harmed us. Again, it's not an easy feat, but we have to do it because that's what God calls us to do. That is what our Savior wants us to do. Those are the people and the representatives of him that he wants us to be. He wants us to be kind, gentle as doves, as hard as it is, get to the point where we don't even want to harm somebody who has done evil unto us. And there's different levels, right? A lot of different things have happened to people where this makes it, where this is very hard for them to get. It's hard for them to accept. But at the end of the day, we love God and we want to do what he said. So we have to follow what he told us. We got to learn how to be respectful to our leaders. We have to learn how to let forgiveness reign in our hearts when things happen that are not part of the narrative of what we see it. Sometimes God is using things to build, allows things to happen to us that, you know, and I know situations where I would have been in business with the people that God was showing me that I didn't need to be in business with them, but I felt like I should. But because I prayed about it and asked God what was the right decision to make, he showed me some things and the things that he showed me let me know that this is why I don't want you in business with these people. And there may, might be different situations with you where you're trying to decide what friends should be in your circle. Well, let God make those decisions and show you what you should do. But remember to have that forgiven heart and remember to not harbor any negative feelings towards your leadership, towards friends and towards people who do you wrong. But to let God heal your heart because he already said love covers a multitude of sins and then vengeance, if necessary, belongs to him. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this time and we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that uh, vengeance belongs to you. And Lord, we thank you that you gave us an example of how our heart and how we should always be willing to forgive and not take vengeance and allow vengeance to be yours. But for us, for us to understand that love covers a multitude of sins and for us to understand to put these things and these troubles that we may have, whether it's with our leaders or our friends, these things we put in your hands. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the examples that your word gives us for how we should show your love. Help us to be like like David was in this situation, Lord, and just be patient, kind, and knowing that it's all in your hands. So we thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. We remember today that we have the victory in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. All right, as we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now, and uh we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet, um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now. 
because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they were afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The Word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his Son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There's a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelations 20, 15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23 is where that scripture is found. Okay. So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay. He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, pardoned for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's Book of Life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay? For again, for the wages of sin is death. But, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter one, verse 12. Okay, so we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to, you have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to, um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission. 
uh, the leadership in this group, um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return. But a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you have started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.